I made this teapot a couple of days ago, and now it's time to tidy it up and turn it into a teapot. Uh, I like to tidy both sides, so it, most people just turn it this way, but I want to uh, trim it and tidy it right side up and upside. I've looked at teapots from all sides now. And we're going to start with uh, right side up, and I'm going to center the teapot. It's going to put a bit of moisture on there to make sure it doesn't fly off halfway through the process. And this is a, a good trick because sometimes when you're throwing things, your body your, isn't completely centered. And that way we're only going to center the top. Well, smart not. We're only going to center this part. And sometimes in the throwing, pots get a little bit of rhythm. So you're only going to center the part you're going to trim. They're going to turn it up and, and center the other part you're going to trim. So it doesn't have to be a perfect throw. We can join it all together. I'm just going to center that gently I like to trim this side because I really like that strong line I talked about the negative space so when your teapot sits against the wall it has a really definite shape I guess I don't know how to you know what I mean it has a definite strength there's no wishy-washy wiggly weak thrown lines I'm just going to trim this tidy. I caught a little bit of grit in there and dragged it around, made a messy mark. You can't trim a lot off of here because you do have a finite amount of clay here and you have to have enough body to withstand the sculpting. I'm going to give this one a little bit more definition. It's I like to trim with the clay quite soft. You can see I could almost throw this. I prefer softer clay to hard. It's just a lot more forgiving. I like to build with it a bit softer too. Now when I was throwing this, I didn't sponge the seat. I do like it all sponged and tidy. I do that after, well that was rude. I do that after it's all ready to go. I'm just going to take this and you can see with the plastic on there, it really makes a nice shiny finish so there's no rough clay it just I keep talking about tidy and it really is important for your pots to stand out to have them tidy you see I've got a nice definition here my seat is a strong seat there's a thickness there that will frame the lid it says I'm a teapot and don't mess with me anyway so that is only trimmed to here now I'm going to take it off and I don't uh, cut this extra stuff off here when I'm throwing just for this reason. I'm going to take it off, I'm going to take the bat off, and under here we have enough clay to put the chuck on, because I'm going to turn it upside down. I just spent all this time making the top tidy. I'm not going to put it on the wheel. I'm going to put it on the chuck. Now I throw my own chucks, and if you notice, this is a solid chuck. A lot of people throw what I call the nuclear reactor chucks, and they're they're hollow on both sides and they quite often warp or squeeze on the bottom and I just I prefer a bowl this is a heavy throw and it's not going anywhere there and it's sort of centered I'm not going to center it a lot because you're going to have to center the it when you get your teapot on there and I'm going to turn it upside down in the chuck and you notice that the size of it my teapots are all basically the same size as caught by the edge of this. And I want to make sure it's level. You can see that it's far from level. I'm just going to make sure it's level. All right, that rude needle dove to its death. I'm going to make sure it's level. And you can see it's still far from level. The high spot will touch the needle. And we're just going to take that high spot in front of you and flatten it out. I like to make a line sometimes so you're not rocking back and forth. This takes as long as it takes. When you're by yourself and no one's watching, that takes about two little turns. When you got the four cameras and the dog and the cameraman looking at you, it could take a while. 
Through the wonders of post-production and Mr. Clay, Jim's cameraman partner, <laughs> husband, other man, I don't know. Uh, actually, he's very good. I'm going to take a little tangent here because I can hammer on and on and on about a whole bunch of stuff. I can say I'm going to say this and I'm going to say and I actually say that. And he goes into the back room in the office at home and he puts it all together and makes me sound like I know stuff. So the, through the wonders of post-production and the magic of Jim, we're now level and it's just took mo just took a second or two. Okay, it's level here and you want to make sure it's centered here. This is what I'm talking about. Um, if, it isn't, if it isn't centered, because I centered this, this is where you can center the pot. Uh, not everything has to be perfectly thrown, as I said before. There's a whole lot of pressure and perfect. And there it is. Now I'm going to trim this the same way I would I trimmed anything else. Just turn it upside down. Uh, you can see where the other trimming ended. I'm going to pick it up there. So you have that continuous, strong, smooth line. So when your teapot sits against the wall, it has that definite strength in its negative space. I always do my, I like this foot on it. As I said before, I like the foot to sit on the table and say I'm sitting here. Undercut it a little bit. And I use, I, I do it without even thinking, this is a, a pointier end and a rounder end. I undercut with the pointy and cut with the bigger one. I've used this trimming tool, well not this one, I've used this shape of trimming tool for decades. I like it because it's my favorite and I like it. Trimming tools are personal. Use the one you like. There's no wrong one if it works for you. It is the right one. I got my, my foot definition there. I'm going to put the little circle in the middle that frames my name and stamp. I've got quite a bit of clay. You can tell by the tone, the higher the pitch, the thinner the body. If you're doing this and it starts to move, you're done for me. I like to put some clay down there, as I mentioned before, in throwing. There's enough clay there to compact and not go thin. You can trim and make a definite foot on it. It's don't be afraid to make your pots a little on the heavier side. I've been known to agree with a little on the heavier side. You can blend these trimmings in, join this sponging to the sponging you did when it was right side up, make it tidy. Sponge it all, make it one nice continuous line. Make it tidy with your fingertip. And I'll stamp it with my stamps. I talked about I will sign this when it's completely dry. There's trimming the teapot. We'll build, we'll build it in a bit. We have some spouts and some lids to talk about, but trimming the teapot, it is trimmed. I'll take it out of here. I'll put it on paper. I like to put it on paper. The paper is always tidy. This could have a little bumpy bit and you just spend all that time sponging and now it's always tidy.